decided to make a quick video on this and I have been some people think I just like make emails out of the I mean emails make videos out of the blue just for uh, gits and shiggles that's what every European should learn that little phrase called gits and shiggles it's pig Latin by the way you could figure out what it means uh, <laughs> I make videos out of the blue just you know due to angst or too much coffee or something but it is the case sometimes that I get like a pile of emails and someone is saying like, oh, you know, I, I saw this on this video and uh, this doesn't sound right. Or, um, you know, uh, specifically, I got uh, three in the past 24 hours and one person said, um, this person uh, says that um, light meters are throwback technology. And like, yeah, I know, I I know about that. I mean, I've, I've been doing some videos lately on light meters, and uh, you know, um, uh, li li listen, we all make mistakes. Uh, kind of like the time that uh, I used to skydive all the time. Used to be really skinny. Got thousands of skydives underneath my belt. Um, that uh, I decided to uh, pull my chute in a track, and what that means is instead of falling like this, you actually fold your arms back and you uh, fall like a bullet. <laughs> And when you pull in a track, it's kind of like uh, hitting a brick wall while wearing a seat belt really, really fast. And uh, anyway, the straps uh, cut a lot of blood vessels in my legs, and my legs were like purple all the way down to my ankles. I looked like I'd uh, been in a torture camp or something like that. So that was uh, something that I did that I never did again, which was stupid, which is pull my chute in a track. Um, <laughs> we all make mistakes. And uh, someone had said that I am open to correcting mistakes. Well, that's good. Uh, see, photography is a huge field, okay? Just like race cars are a huge field. I mean, some people uh, know everything about drag racing, but they don't know anything about endurance racing. I mean, someone's like, I mean, I'm a professional race car driver at the track, and you know, they're, they're driving those machines that go like 300 miles an hour in 2.2 seconds, but they don't know anything about track driving, and photography is the same way. You know, someone that does tabletop or commercial photography might not know a damn thing about portrait photography, and vice versa. I mean, photography is huge. It's like, well, how huge could it be? It's just camera and lenses. Well, it's the arena that you're shooting in. Food photography has all its own little parameters. So, <clears throat> let me take a couple quotes, and let's uh, take a look at those and uh, see where these mistakes. Um, uh, here's an exact quote. Another kind of holdover from the old traditional ways of photography is a light meter. Okay, let's look at that statement. Another kind of holdover from the old traditional way. It's kind of like a, someone that uses a light meter is like an old fart that's been uh, shooting films and they like grew up with a twin lens reflex camera. And uh, no, that's not the case. Um, Every professional studio photographer that I know, they use a light meter, and they use it for a reason. There are a thousand things, and I've made some videos recently, listing the many, 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 many things that uh, you can't get there from here, okay? You can't get there from here. There is no path of doing that with any camera that you got. Calculating uh, lighting ratios, calculating also well, what is the... Uh, uh, what is the amount of ambient light versus uh, flat uh, fill or uh, strobe light? You can't do that with your camera. Um, you see, once the shutter opens up, here's a fact that's also undeniable. Once the uh, shutter opens up, your mirror raises and your shutter opens up on your camera, you know, right before it takes a shot or right as it's taking a shot, your camera is not metering it. In. <clears throat> I want you to make a clear note of this, okay? When you take that picture and your mirror lifts up and the shutter opens up, the first curtain, okay, and then your sensor is exposed and the shot is being taken or right immediately about to be taken, your camera can't meter a damn thing. Your camera cannot meter a damn thing at that point in time. And this is what one of the many, many, many things that a light meter is for. I mean, pop up a flash. You know, be able to check my lighting ratios, my hair light, my fill light, my background light. I want to check my ratios. I want to see exactly what these, but boom, boom. Y you can't do that with any camera. So, well, I got TTL metering. TTL metering is just taking a gigantic snapshot of the amount of light that's entering, then it quelches the flash. Okay, that is not professional photography where you're able to layer light. And especially if you've got your... Uh, 
your uh, speed light or uh, your studio strobe. Your, your studio strobes don't work off TTL, and your wireless uh, speed lights don't work off TTL. You can't be you cannot get there from here. So this is a, a very I will be very kind and gentle since we all make mistakes. God knows I've made plenty. We all have, okay? But <clears throat> you know, I. You know, someone that says this that has like a, a bazillion people that follows everything they say as gospel, um, you know, that is an incorrect statement. Like 10 minutes or like two minutes of research on Google would have told you that information. And therefore, you, if you said that, you, you probably shouldn't have said that. Uh, here's a statement number two. It upsets me. Upsets, really? Okay. Upsets me when I see people going out and using a technique, meaning a light meter, that isn't technically superior. <laughs> that isn't technically superior just because of outdated teachings. Let's listen to that statement really closely here, okay? It upsets me, really? When I see people going out and using a technique, meaning using one of these things, pow, pow, that isn't technically superior just because of outdated teachings. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't even know where to begin with that statement. Not only is this technically superior, it'll do a thousand things that your damn camera, and I don't care what camera you got, will do. Your camera cannot do, excuse me. <laughs> your camera can't do that stuff. It can't calculate ratios. And once your, uh, your reflex mirror opens up and your shutter opens up and your camera is snapping the... Your camera can't meter a damn thing. Your camera can't meter studio strobes and wireless uh, uh, speed lights that are hooked to a pocket wizards, whatever sort of wireless... Your camera can't do any of that stuff. It can't do any of it. None of it. I've had some people, and listen, I've already said like 95% of people that are doing average photography, click, 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 you know, they don't need a light meter. I've already said that, 95% of people. I had some people that have bought some Alien Bees studio strobes off my recommendation. One guy's making some good money out in California. Word, what's up, brother? And <laughs> he got an old uh, Minolta meter, which takes a flash. And he emailed me, he's like, oh, man, thank you, brother. He said, man, I, I've gotten so much more accurate, and I'm able to uh, take shots so much quicker. You're sitting there on your camera, you know, you're chimping on a histogram. Your histogram isn't going to tell you anything about lighting ratios or percentage of uh, ambient versus a flash or ambient versus strobe. People say, I can, hit, I can chimp off my... That histogram is chimping off of a JPEG. It isn't looking at the raw. It doesn't even know what the hell the dynamic range of your camera is. I mean, I can calibrate this to any camera. This is, talk about, this is not technically superior. Are you kidding me? This isn't technically, this is more technically superior than any camera that you've got. You can't get there from here. So <clears throat> someone that says I'm open to correcting mistakes, well, I'm going to be, you know, um, uh, I'm going to be, uh, you know, blunt but very kind in stating that we all make mistakes, but, uh, you know, if there's like a bazillion people that take your word as gospel, then my recommendation is is that uh, you, you don't say stuff like that, uh, or B, you do five minutes of research before saying something like that, or C, you post a retraction. I say, you know, photography is a huge arena. I kind of said something about light meters, and uh, I, you know, I really didn't think it through. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, it's just the way it is. You know, it's kind of like, you know, some food photographer that, that takes tabletop shots of food for, uh, and there's a lot of people that actually do that, talking about, you know, on-location portrait photography. It's like, well, you know a lot about photography and cameras, but your little arena is doing this. And that doesn't mean you really know what the hell you're talking about as far as that. Tons of landscape photographers, too. When they're doing, they want the most dynamic range out of their shot. And I had a guy email me today, he's got a D750 and a D810, and he was worried about uh, shadow detail on the D810. Uh, now the D750 has a better uh, gain over the exact same exposure, same lens, same period of time than the D810 does. The D750, however, has an AA filter, which means the images don't look as sharp. You know, we're talking about 24 megapixels versus 36, but the 24 megapixels of the D750 
have better uh, shadow detail retention because they have larger photo sites. D810 is 36 megapixel camera with smaller photo sites. You know, one of the main reasons hardcore professional landscape photographers use a light meter is to squeeze all the orange juice out of the orange that is the dynamic range of their camera, therefore yielding the maximum potential. You, um, this is the same reason that people that drive that, ra that drive race cars, you know, you can buy, go out and buy an expensive car, and you can go, you know, zip around the freeway at 200 miles an hour. But the people that are the pros, they're sitting there and they're tweaking and tuning everything to get the maximum potential out of their machine. They've got all these pit crews that are constantly adjusting the engine every run, and that way that car is going to, you know, you know, you beat somebody in a race uh, competition by, you know, hundredths of a second. So every little tweak matters. And that's not, not to say that you need to be some sort of tweaking button sniffer out if you're going to take a landscape shot. If you know how to meter for it, fine. Turns out great, fine. But if you want it to be the absolute maximum potential that you can get out of your camera, Wow, power dropped out for a second there. Get the maximum potential out of, uh, I just realized my camera and my microphone are not off of uh, city power. There's a thunderstorm out there. You want to get the maximum potential out of your shot, then uh, you, know, you need to get the maximum dynamic range out of that shot by using a light meter. This is why a lot of landscape photographers, hardcore landscape photographers, use a light meter. So to say that this is tech not technically superior, is 100% inaccurate. To th think that this is holdover or throwback technology, 100, 10,000% inaccurate. So, you know, you open to uh, correcting mistakes, that's a, a big mistake. And uh, I said, your camera can't be doing anything when it, once that, uh, that uh, the reflex mirror and the shutter raises, you know, it, it can't, it doesn't know how to calculate flash ratios. It doesn't know how to mess with strobes, much less multiple strobes. And chimping off your histogram is not good enough. It does not work. It is not going to get the most out of the shot. You know, this is, you know, well, this is an extra piece of gear, therefore it pisses away time. It does exactly the opposite of that. It's like, well, I don't want to, and I'm not about hauling around gear. You know, I'm not. But if it's necessary to get the maximum, you, you, you can't go on location and uh, take a bunch of studio strobes and just start, well, you know, hold on, I'm going to take a bunch of uh, hit and miss guesses, like spray and pray with a machine gun, and look in the back of your histogram when the model is sitting there, you know, picking her nose, or, you know, you go out there, you take a light, boom, flat strobe fires, boom, okay, I've got my readings, this is my average, you set your camera, boom, 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 boom. Okay. You're, you're pissing away time, and also you're pissing away a lot of time screwing around with the shots in Lightroom. And nobody likes to do that because no model and no corporate gig is going to pay you to screw around four more hours in Lightroom instead of 20 minutes. It's like, well, I can hit it, get it right the first time, boom, 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 dial it in, hit it. Or I can just like spray and pray and have all these damn shots to look at and screw around hour after hour, late at night on Lightroom. You know, you know, to hell with that. So in that way, this is faster. It's superior. It's not throwback technology. It's not a holdover. I hope I made that clear. Apparently, a thunderstorm is rolling in, and that's why my power dropped off for a second. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.